everybody's doing well, man. What's on your mind? What's on everybody's mind? Let me get my recording together over here. Just doing a quick tap in with the fam. I'm glad to have everybody tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tariq Nasheed Twitter space, ladies and gentlemen. We are in here. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Hope you guys have had a productive week so far. What's up, D. Tubman? What's up, Sir Major? Uh, who else is in here? A lot of people. A lot of y'all in here. Pan FBA. Man, I'm just just checking, checking in. And again, I, I want to thank everybody who participated in the FBA Expo. A lot of people are still talking about that and how successful it was and how wonderful it was and how the vibe was was so positive and people are waiting on the next event. And I shout out to everybody who was a part of that, man. I really appreciate everybody participating. And what we're going to do, we're getting a vendors list ready because a lot of people are asking about the vendors. I think D is helping us out with that, Ms. D Tubman. We're getting that vendors list and we're going to shout all of those wonderful vendors out because we do want you to patronize them. Also, um, some of my vendors, I want you to holler at me because I need some of your stuff. We um we have an, a, an event out at the museum for Juneteenth. And what we're going to do, um, we're giving Juneteenth gifts to the people who come. Uh, when you come to the event for Juneteenth, and we're going to have a lot of great comedians up there. We're going to have good food up there. We're going to, the food is going to be complimentary. We're going to give complimentary gift bags to the guests. So it's going to be a real nice vibe. And um, some of the sponsors and some of the vendors, um, if you would like some of your products to be in the gift bags, give me a holla because I would love to promote your stuff even further. We're still promoting the stuff from the people who were vendors. We still want to get people's names out there and get your businesses out there. So this would be a good opportunity to promote your stuff. So we'll have that vendors list pretty soon and we'll shout the vendors out and I'll give you guys more details about the event we're having June 17th at the Hidden History Museum. You get your tickets at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. I just want to talk about a little bit, talk a little bit about the Democratic Shills are already shilling. As you know, it's election season, so um, you're going to hear a lot of these trolls and these Democratic shills come in the rooms, come in our spaces, trying to shame us into voting for nothing. They're going to start telling us about all these things Biden has done for black people. And if we don't vote for Biden, we're a bunch of um, Republican shills and we're really MAGA undercover and we're grifters. And we're going to hear all of the jive ass talking points and they've already started early. Um, and I told you guys they were going to come after me heavy because they they feel a certain way about the influence that I have. So they've already started coming for me. Oh, musty, decrepit ass. Karen Hunter was talking greasy on her jive ass radio show on Sirius. So she was talking greasy about me. They did like a whole 30 minute program about me lying about me talking about a make-believe organization that doesn't exist. So, you know, Karen Hunter is head plantation mammy number one with her musty, decrepit ass looking like a stunt double for Miss Sophia in the color fucking purple. But that's to be expected. Over there at Urban View on Sirius, that's the Democratic Shill hotline. Sharpton has a show on there all of those old butter biscuit boule Negroes have shows over there on Urban View. Anytime you see Urban View on Sirius FM or whatever, that's just that's the boule Democratic shill mouthpiece. And it's Urban View, my ass. It's just like that black news network bullshit that they had, which was nothing but a Democratic shill propaganda mill. We got to understand that. And the thing is, notice a lot of folks in the white media or even the mainstream black media, if you can call it that, nobody never really mentioned the success of what we had going on. The And, and, and I didn't expect them to and didn't want them to, to be honest, because we have more influence than them. But they didn't even acknowledge the expo that we had. We had a completely constructive, positive expo where we had 
just dozens and dozens of black owned businesses doing great business, um, generating income for their businesses, empowering each other. We had a great um, several great workshops of empowerment, talking about real estate, talking about crypto, talking about investing, talking about understanding your legal rights. Shout out to um, attorney Dennis Sperling. We had so many phenomenal um workshops and seminars shout out to our good brother greg marcel dixon shout out to our brother afro elite who was there helping out um helping to put things together man we that was a phenomenal event we had out there in dallas texas and not only did these democratic shield negroes in the so-called black media which they're not really black media they didn't really mention it and the only time they did mention it, it was, is when they were trying to disparage it. To be honest, a lot of them were trying to undermine it. And this is the thing that I have a problem with, because if black folks get together and we're not kissing the ass of the Democrats, which we didn't have a, a, a situation where we're giving props to any political party. And when we do situations where a bunch of black people get together and we're not letting Kamala Harris come up and speak and we're not letting them funnel in some kind of left LGBT agenda or whatever, any type of agenda that they want to funnel in. See, then it's a problem. So whenever black folks get together, you better understand that there's going to be somebody um, pulling the strings, throwing a big check somewhere and then co-opting the whole thing so they can push an agenda. Just like we, with Essence Fest, y'all see Essence Fest, you know, you have all of these great musical groups and all of a sudden they'll bring Stacey Abrams ass out on stage. They'll waddle her out to start talking. You, you, you dig that type of shit. So we it wasn't that kind of party with us. There's no agenda. This is all about black empowerment. This is not no we're not front people for the Democrats. We're not front people for the Republicans. And when they can't use a black audience, boy, they, it's like you're persona non grata to them. But unfortunately for them, they're not running the yard right now. Nobody takes them serious anyway. It's really about the grassroots out here. That's what people are rocking with. And this is what, why they keep trying to discredit me and other people in the grassroots. Let me get some folks on the phone here. Let me get some folks on. Let's get Sir Major on here. What's up, Sir Major? Where you at, Sir Major? What's up, Brother Tree? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's on your mind? Hey, man, just shout out to you for the uh, FBA Expo. Uh, phenomenal event like you talked about. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, I, I wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Nation of Islam for actually pulling up and holding it down and taking part in uh, uh, what FBA is doing. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but they were underneath a lot of flack for bringing out of their, you know, bringing their whips out or whatever. Uh, so they, you yeah. know, they did the place. I mean, that's just haters. You know, folks are going to do what they do. They're going to hate. They're going to try to stop the motion. Uh, but shout out to you and uh, the Brothers at the Nation. Oh, yeah. Much respect, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, Brother Ben X, you know, they, the brothers were pulling out the whips, and you had some some people like, oh, what? Why they got to be shining like that? Boy, yeah. <sighs> shout out to Brother Ben X. Shout out to some of those wonderful brothers from the nation. Look, dude, there's this thing where... Anytime a black person is self-sufficient and successful, what's with this nonsense? You got to hate on them. Nobody has a problem with a Negro in a whip if niggas are driving something real fly, as long as they know that a white person helped get, get the money for them. Like if it's a rapper, nobody has a problem with a, ra a rapper in a Benz or a Bentley. Nobody has no problem with that shit because they know the white person signed them and gave them a check. So niggas feel comfortable about that. If a dude is an athlete and he's driving a, a Mercedes or a Bentley or whatever, nobody has a problem. You, you understand there's a white boss who gave it to him. You have no problem with that. But if a black person has the same shit and there's no white boss, hey, nigga, you pimping the community. What, what the hell? You ain't got no white daddy? You's free? What the hell? How'd you get your freedom, nigga? You done scheme the scam. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're projecting your niggatry on them. You sambos, any sambo who talks like that, you need to be 
excommunicated from the community. We got to get that Sambo talk out of here. These plantation Negroes, every time a brother's shining on his own, it riles up your insecurity. Man, I want them brothers from the nation. Brother Ben X, I want my man to roll deep, roll heavy, roll fly. I want all of you to roll fly on your own if you can. I pop my collar if I see a black person on his own, not with a white boss, shining, got something fly. Man, I pop my collar six ways to Sunday to you. I love That's why we had the expo. I want you to be successful. I like successful black people. I'll help you become successful. I'll help you get more money. Boy, we got to get, the, you know, that hater stuff that we have, that's based on feminine fuckboy energy. We got a lot of feminine energy niggas out here, man. You got dudes running around here with boyginas. That's feminine energy. Because that's how women are catty like that. You don't want to see another chick shine. Women have that kind of cattiness. A grown-ass man should never have that kind of cattiness. Nigga, if you are hating on another man because he's rolling a fly whip, man, go rinse your pussy off. And sit down. And powder it up and, and, and go on somewhere, nigga. We got to get rid of these busters in the community, man. There's a lot of buster energy now. Let me get some more of y'all on in a minute. Did y'all see? There's a clip I posted of a little boy. <laughs> and I don't know. He, I don't know if he was black or whatever, but a little kid. And he's running, screaming. Y'all saw the clip. I, I posted it about a, an hour or so ago. He's running, screaming. Somebody catches him on a ring camera. Ah, ah, and he's running from a little bitty ass toy dog. He's screaming bloody murder. And it's like a little toy dog that's really trying to play with him. And the caption is, boy, these 2023 kids, when they go outside, they freak out. And that's indicative of just the energy out here now. Y'all understand, when we were growing up back in the day, we were tough, nigga. We had pit bulls chasing our ass. Nigga, back in our day, we had German shepherds and Doberman pinchers chasing us, dude. The threat was real. We used to get bit by dogs. Raise your hand if you've been bit by a motherfucking dog before, nigga. I got bit in the face by a husky before. Nigga, we took them lickings and kept on ticking. Raise your hand if you've been bit by a dog. <laughs> Raise your hand. Some of y'all, if you're over the age of 30, your ass has been bit by a fucking dog before, nigga. And you had to shake it off and man up. There you go. Raise your hand. <laughs> Nigga, we used to get beat and, and, and ate up by dogs back in the day. <laughs> Man, dogs used to fuck us up back in the day. And we went back outside and kept it pampered. Nigga, that's what it was. We were tough with it. You got little kids now running from chihuahuas. Man, get your bitch ass on somewhere, little boy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the energy is different now. It's a different energy. We got to get back to the man up energy man it's got to be all about manning up damn that's why it's all about getting outside that's why i like to do events now i i, I want to get back to doing a lot of events so we can get outside and network and politic with each other because folks sitting up on the internet and speaking of bitch ass what's up giselle how you doing um we need to be out here politicking with each other face to face looking each other in the eye, doing good business, just like we were doing in, in Texas. That was a good thing. We were looking at each other, shaking hands, looking at the products that people have, looking at the services they have to offer, just talking to people in person, networking, politicking, man. We got to go back to that. We got to keep that energy going. That's why, you know, we're doing the events at the museum. Y'all need to come on out, network and vibe especially the Juneteenth um, situation we got going on. It's going to be fly. Get your tickets, hit historymuseum.com. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get on the road. I'm going to probably do a little short tour in August, just myself, to start hitting up cities. I haven't been on tour in a minute. I have not been on tour, done, done, done like a lecture tour. I've not done that in a long time. And people have been asking me about that. And I've been so busy 
doing these big ass expos and these big ass events where I'm dealing with a lot of people. Um, I haven't done no solo stuff in a long time. I've been out here just trying to give everybody else some shine. And now because a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on and how, how a lot of people are ungrateful about a lot of shit that I don't like. There's a lot of ungrateful shit going on behind the scenes that I really don't like. And I'm like, but shit, I can, hell, I'm doing all this and spending all this money and getting all these big ass venues and bringing in all these big ass acts and doing all this shit for these people. And certain people are not even grateful for the shit. I'm like, hell, I can go on the road myself and be good. And I bring in the same damn audiences by my damn self. Like I always used to do, you know? So a lot of people have been wanting me to to hit their cities. And you know what? I'm going to start doing that. There's a lot of cities that I want to go to and um, just chop up game. And I'm going to tell you the cities that I'm going to hit up. I'm going to hit up um, Chicago. I ain't been to Chicago in a minute. And I love Chicago. I'm going to do Atlanta, um, either D.C. or New York in August. I'm going to just hit them up back to back to back just so I can vibe and chop it up with folks and just um, have a good vibe going. Yeah, Cause I've not been on the road myself in a minute. So we're going to make that happen. What's up black Voltron? Oh Lord. Giselle, I get you on in a minute. All right, I got to prepare my, my brain for your ass. Let me get my brother Afro elite on here. Afro what's up brother? I can hear you, sir. What's going on, man? On a couple of things. First thing I want to say is um, the people who hating on the expo, that just really shows you that we have a problem in the community that people hate on or black people hate on black success, black success. Yeah. That's not co-signed by white people. There's people who, right. are, who are sitting up there taking pictures try, in weird little angles, trying to make it seem like the expo was empty or what not paid to make it. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I've seen that little troll shit. Yeah, they'll go in one because you know we had like three, three, about three, four rooms going at the same time. They'll go take a picture, um, like in the morning. Oh, ain't nobody here, and there's a, and there's other people, yeah, that type of shit. Yeah, exactly, yeah, troll it, shit. Exactly. Yeah. And now, I, if anybody was there, they would tell you it was so packed you could almost barely move at certain times, like upstairs and downstairs. It was it was packed right. like to the maximum. You know, so yeah. it's a lot of people who show that when it comes to black, they talk about black success online, but in real life, they're really not for that. Because when you're really okay. for that in real life, you would appreciate stuff like this. And this is the stuff that I feel like the Democrats are really uh, upset with you about, because when you make stuff like this pop off and it becomes a success, it really shows how much black people don't need them. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So that's why oh. there's this desperate need to discredit it. You know, exactly. They 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 tried to ignore the um the rally and everything, and then you, which was a success. Thousands of people showed up, yes, and was. then they tried to yep. um. And now you're making another successful event. So now they all like, okay, this this nigga ain't stopping no time soon. So we got to do something about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm. just the, I'm just letting you know what it really is. It's a bunch of hate because you know you're making uh, hit after hit. You know, and it's showing black people yeah. how we can do stuff by ourselves when we're on code. Real talk, man. Thank you so much. And brother, the Afro Elite hit it right on the money. Well, when we start doing things independent of them. We didn't get no white sponsors. We didn't get no white sponsors. We didn't get no white money. Uh, uh, no white political parties were involved. None of that, man. We had that thing popping. Don't let. Don't, and and y'all look. Fortunately, y'all know. Y'all know a lot of these Negroes are trolling. Um, the event in um, Saturday was a huge success. It was jam packed up there to the point where the fire marshal was coming in, warning us about you know having the crowds straight so they're not just going to overflow we had spread everybody out it, it was packed up in there everybody had a phenomenal time those of you that who were there you saw what it was and you enjoyed it that's the good thing it was a positive event jam-packed everybody enjoyed it the workshops were great seminars were great the speakers were great the entertainment was great kiki wyatt was phenomenal 
it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And remember, if it was not a success, people wouldn't be so triggered. Let's be clear. If it was a failure, nobody would be triggered. You wouldn't be triggered by it. You wouldn't be sitting up whining. People don't hate down. You hate up. You don't hate on something that's failing. You hate up. You only hate on success. That's what my man Ice-T says. People only hate up. You only hate on somebody when the shit is fly. That's why the Democratic Shields are always trying to um, throw my name in their mouths, talking greasy. Because they understand they don't really have no influence with these Negro shills. They don't have no influence. Their Negro shills, they can't draw those kind of crowds, family. They can't draw the kind of crowd that we have for the reparations thing unless white people are spending a gazillion dollars bringing in folks and um, promoting it and and, um, putting it all on the, the mainstream media. And giving fucking fish sandwiches out. You understand? They got to have fish fries and give away free fish sandwiches to get niggas out in large numbers. They got to spend a lot of money. Yeah. So they can't draw those kind of crowds. And that's a problem. And let's be clear. A lot of this stuff is controlled by these intelligent agencies, too, because they see it as a problem, too. They see, hey, they see, hey man, if a black person who no political party is controlling. This is a black person who can draw thousands of people out in one location and another location all over the country. They look at that as a problem. You better believe they look at that as a problem. Do y'all know how many undercover agents they've been sending to the museum? These folks send a damn op in to the museum every week. There was some cop nigga that they flew out and sent to the museum last week. A for real cop, an undercover cop, who's kind of a known undercover cop, by the way. Some tether Negro. They do that shit all the time. They see that as a threat. They don't like to see a black person who they can't call white daddy on. Because see, in Hollywood... You know, Negroes are on a leash. You know, you you do something they don't like, they'll they'll reel you in. They'll call your agent, and you know they they'll call the your production company, and you know they'll have your handlers reprimand you. You know, they do that to black folks in Hollywood to keep them on a leash. They say, hey man, there was an accusation against you, so we're gonna have to sit you down. Your uh, your management company is gonna have to kind of put you on ice for a minute. It's that type of shit. The uh, niggas got handlers. Yeah. But when you don't have a handler, you know, they try all the other stuff. So they try to do the cointel pro tactic of trying to discredit you all the time. Everything is all about don't listen to him, don't listen to him, don't listen to him. That's coming from the intelligent agencies, guys. Let's get some people on here. Let's get smooth. Smooth. What's up, smooth? Hop on, man. Mr. Smooth, hop on. Flex, what's up, man? I'm good, OG. How you doing, homie? Yeah, chilling, man. But but yeah, man, the hating is crazy, man. And and it's funny, you know. You got it's it's the same haters on here, man. And the haters, they starting to get exposed now because they beefing with each other. And some of these guys don't even got fifteen dollars in their pocket, man. So yeah. Oh, real shit. <laughs> it's bad out yeah. here, bro. <laughs> I can I can imagine, man. So thank you so much. Okay, family. Giselle wants to get on, guy. Give us if y'all want Giselle on. Give us a thumbs up. If you wanna, if you don't want Giselle on, put a thumbs down. What, what do y'all want? Everybody in here, should I do it? Okay, Giselle, I'm, I'm getting a gang of thumbs down. <laughs> Damn, Giselle, the thumbs down. Are- it's real unanimous with the thumbs down. <laughs> the thumbs downs are insane, man. Oh, we got one person, Tyree, said thumbs up. Okay, oh, well, let me get some more folks on here. Let's get MF Kush. We're going to do MF Kush on here. 
Yeah, the thumbs down went up heavy. What's up, MF Kush? Um, hello, Tariq. How are you? I do just want to tell you, shout out to you for the expo. My husband and I was there, and it was a real great oh, uh, thank you. event to have. So thank you for that, because I got a lot of cards, and I did business with my own people. Um, oh, it was beautiful, wasn't it? Oh, it, it, it very much so was. I do want to bring something to everybody's attention that I have been talking about. There was a brother that was there at the expo who recently just got arrested due to due to white supremacists lying on him and paying a narrative saying that he physically assaulted somebody. So I'm get I'm not I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna put it out there. This brother needs help. Uh it is posted on my page. So I hope everybody that has seen it, it is in the comments. Bring awareness to this because these white people are coming and they're not coming with with niceness and peace. They're coming to take y'all out the household. So we gotta talk about our brother. We gotta keep our brother and keep that shit posted. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you, beloved. Okay, there you go. All right. Let me see. Let's get um Panamera. Let's get Panamera in here. Let's get Panamera. What's up, Panamera? I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Panamera, turn your microphone on. There we go. If you can. Okay, there, there we go. go. So um I am a Uber driver. It's my side gig. Okay. <laughs> but okay, okay. So all of the passengers that I get complain about the tethers. They talk about how rapey they seem, how like they always oh, flirting damn. with them. They always like, you know, they make them feel very uncomfortable. So when they get a black, especially girl, they're like, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And I've been mm, seeing a lot of yeah. stuff of them hating on the, you know, the FBA. Uh, the event you just had and it's like what are y'all mad for mm -hmm. and yeah the tethers are real real mad because see, the thing is we did something that they can't do we all get on code and we get together and we just kick it no for sure us from different yeah we get together and everybody's just chill we we're cool ain't nobody tripping we all um spending money building with each other creating an economic base and we're doing good business. And where they're from, niggas are knocking each other over the head with bamboo sticks, <laughs> robbing them. You dig what I'm saying? Y'all, we, we really don't understand the degenerate shit that goes on in some of these places these folks are from. Just getting on code is a foreign damn concept. Everybody's tribal, scratching each other's eyes out. It's cutthroat codification has gone out the window so when they see us codified they feel a certain way so they you know, always hate really jealous of us yeah big time big time but thank you so much beloved sure. and, and 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 not just the regular tethers some of the the other south asian tethers too like the dinesh d'souza's people have been getting on his bumper about that little iq nonsense that he said People are still on his bumper. And that's because a lot of us are getting on code, too. See, Dinesh D'Souza used to get away with saying all that little slick shit about black folks. Now, when he says it, enough of us says, hold on, nigga. Wait a minute. Where you, you, We see where you're from, dude. Dude, you are from the slums of India. You are a slum dog. You're not going to sit up here talking about how black people in America have low IQs and we are this and we're that. And you come from a place where people are rolling around in floating garbage. And you grew up there till you were 18 years old and had to flee and come your ass over here with us. You are not about to say anything greasy about us. And we remind them, we as foundational black Americans, we ain't never lived like y'all. We ain't never lived in them raggedy shanty towns where people are walking around crapping on the streets. We've never lived like that as foundational black Americans. FBA folks, you never let these people fix their mouths to say anything remotely slick about you. We don't live in shanty towns. Even our slave quarters were well put together. Have you guys visited a plantation I would like for you guys to go, if you're in South Carolina, you're in um, Virginia somewhere, or even Alabama, um, especially in Louisiana, they still have a lot of these intact plantations. And 
if you look at not just the main house, because understand, we built the plantations. We were the ones building those homes, those big sprawling, sprawling mansions. We built those. And the leftover material that we had, we built the slave quarters. And if you look at the slave quarters, comparative to the time frame in which they were built, they were relatively decent. These were built in the 1800s. The average white person lived in a raggedy ass log cabin and a shack. So the slave quarters were relatively well put together. When you go visit them, these are some pretty well put together places. They're pretty sturdy, um, um, sturdy places. Based on the limited resources we had to build them, we kind of made comfortable abodes for ourselves. When you really look at them, go down to Louisiana. We filmed down there. We filmed um, one of the movies down there in Louisiana, New Orleans. And um, there were a couple of plantations we filmed on in the slave quarters, man. Um, they still hold up. And they weren't raggedy and, and, and dusty. And they were relatively clean. And we understand, look, as foundational black Americans, remember, those who grew up with grandmother grandmothers, I ain't talking about, you know, the the BBL grandmothers, you know, the chick, there's a quote unquote grandmother out here and she got her titties in a BBL and she's at All Star Weekend giving hand jobs to Atlanta Falcons or whatever. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about the old school grandmothers. Grandmama from back in the day. Epsom salt grandma. I'm talking about that grandma. You know, close my refrigerator grandma. You know, don't leave the damn door open. Um, lock the screen grandma. I'm talking about grandmas with a screen door. When the last time you seen a fucking screen door, nigga? I haven't seen a screen door in years. Nigga, if you grew up with a screen door, you grew up right. You dig? Our grandmothers had fly shit. With limited resources, they kept that little house fly. They kept it clean. It was cozy. We weren't living filthy. That You know when the filth came? In the, the 70s, when the tethers came. Yeah, I, I won't even go there. <laughs> I won't even go there. But I'm saying grandma and them, grandma's house was relatively clean. It was not relative. It's very clean. Our grandmothers weren't filthy. We weren't shitting in those streets. <laughs> they have trash all over the place. Some of y'all grandmas now still got plastic on the damn couch. That couch has been in the family for 50 years and ain't one damn speck of dirt on it because she didn't kept that plastic on that motherfucker. Yeah. Impeccable. We ain't never live filthy. So damn Dinesh D'Souza would say some shit like that to me. Nigga, please. I was sitting up there laying in the living room with chickens and, and goats in the damn room with you. And you're going to come over here and talk about some foundational black Americans. And you got body parts floating around in the Ganges River over there. They got the Ganges River over there. Man, it's so damn filthy. I'm, dude, y'all Google the Ganges River over there in India. You have dead bodies floating around up in that river. Literally garbage, dead animals, and dead bodies. Some of the bodies they don't even bury over there, dude. Y'all think I'm bullshitting? Google it. They don't even bury the bodies over there, man. You be up dead. You, you, you fishing and a nigga just float over your ass. You dig? You up here about to catch you some shrimp and a dead buffalo just float by. And you're going to bring your ass over here to talk about crime in Chicago? Nigga, please. Fuck out of here. All right, look, well, who we got on here? Okay, we got Cosmic L. Let's get Cosmic L in here. What's up, Cosmic L? It's a lot of y'all in here, man. A lot of people in here. I didn't realize so many people in here. Cosmic L, hop on, man. Hey, what's up, Cosmic L? 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 Hey, what's up,
Yeah, how are you doing? Okay, what's going on with you, Cosmic? Yeah, I'd like to know how, like, all this um, rhetoric would translate to anything, you know, productive and positive for your people. I mean, I would like to see how it directly... Rhetoric, rhetoric, it directly rhetoric like her. What, what rhetoric? To liber- uh, hold on. Uh, slow, slow. Okay, let's, let, let's slow it down. Okay, let's put the brakes on the Uber for one second. Rhetoric like what? What rhetoric specifically? Everybody has a rhetoric, right? I mean, how, okay, whatever you're saying right now, we listen into you. How does that translate? Because I feel like you have an audience, right? You have like 408 people listening. This could be a very, very good Mm -hmm. opportunity to discuss like actual ideas, strategy, plan organizing, bringing people together, but, like, I feel like you spend a lot of time talking about things that are really not productive. So, I'm asking... Like, what? What's... I mean, how does you... Like, okay, people are trash. Other people are trash. Other people stink. Other people are... How how does that translate to liberation for your people? How does that directly translate for, um, what do you call it, money, um, welfare? Because... As we speak right now, Tariq, you must know that, you know, like Mississippi, Flint, Michigan, all of those spaces don't even have water, like drinking water. So how does that help? Like, what are you using your audience, your time to do with all of these people? Like, you could ask everybody to donate right, something right, right. to help these people. Because I feel like... Ma'am. I feel like... Oh, slow down, ma'am. <clears throat> ma'am, slow down. You're from East Africa. Are you in the UK or the US right now? Yeah, I've actually noticed how you like to look at people's geographic location. Okay, let's okay. We're not going to play that game, ma'am. We see your foreign flag. You're from East Africa. I want to know if you are Ghana is in, in the West UK. Ignorant, ignoramus. Ghana is in West you, you Africa. What? You what? You also You ignorant. what? Ghana- Wait, wait, no, 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 no. You're not going to name call Abasola. You're not going to name call. Now, where Ghana are you from? Are you from Africa? Okay, you're from Ghana. Okay, I didn't, I saw the flag, but I do have bad eyesight. I really do. So I couldn't tell which country you fled from. Yeah, my like, eyesight. I, mean, I, I trust me, the United States is crumbling down. I will not be there. My uncle needs to come and, home. So, like, please. Send you're in the UK. Call. That means please. that, uh, 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 Abasola, that means you're in the UK because you're not in Ghana. You're in the UK, right? I'm in Kumase, Ashanti region right now. I'm in West Africa. No, you're not. No, you're not. Whoa. You're in the UK. <laughs> Ma'am, you're, you're in the UK right now. Stop. Wow. Stop. You're well, not in Ghana. I am in Ghana. You're, no, you're not, ma'am. Abasola, Abasola, you are in the UK right now, eating a croissant wow, anyway. with a bag. But, okay. see, please so, send so, the so, out. So, Tariq, so, I agree with you. I feel like these but, headers need to come home. Okay, hold, no, no, Abasola, no, no, no. So you're sitting up here talking about Mississippi and Flint don't have water. And, ma'am, you sitting over there with villages that's dry as hell with gangrene and all types of diseases. What are you doing for... Yeah, but what? It's not all the all you highlighting all these things. It will still not translate to liberation and money and welfare for your people. Is what I'm trying to say. Well, what are you doing for your people, dear? What? How are you liberating your people except fleeing, ma'am? I am an educator in Ghana. Is what I tell you. I do educate people, and then I why are you not educating on them? Too, oh, God, then, I, then I, why are you not educating them on getting it together and fixing the damn country so people are not fleeing, ma'am? That's why I'm here. I'm with you. Can you please find a way to organize and send these people back home so we can work? Because I agree, the tethers are actually problematic. What do you think? My uncle has been in California since the 90s. God damn it. He needs to come home. We need ma'am, that you. Really y'all are not going home, you know, ma'am. You, you know, y'all not, you're not, you're not going home. And you I don't you're not in Ghana. I have I do not believe you're in Ghana. You're not in Ghana. I don't believe that in any sense of the word. To be honest, I don't even think you're in the UK. Your ass is somewhere in Smyrna, Georgia, in a section eight apartment with some um, Waffle House in Joloff. I think you're in Georgia right now, ma'am. I Bro, don't believe- would you want to give me some Joloff though? 
Anyway, ma'am, you're you're in but, Georgia, like, to be, right? To be now. honest, I agree with you, Tariq. I feel like uh-huh. um. So do you know what happened? He when he was processing when COVID happened, he wanted to come home, and he has a house at Kenton Chrono. It's at Kumasi, like a very nice house. Okay, like ma'am, ma'am, this, this is Tether Babo. Yeah, you no, know, but y'all ain't got no house. I don't want to hear all that principles among the shit you talking. Your uncle don't have a house. You're not in Ghana. You're not educating anybody over there. You're sitting somewhere in Marietta, Georgia, with a wet and wavy weave waiting on Zaddy to call you to take you out to Justin's restaurant, ma'am. That's what you're doing. You're not fooling anybody. You're over here with us, ma'am. Please tell the truth. People actually know me on this app, unfortunately. Uh-huh. And we know like, that shut you're up, here. Sam. People no no I'm not in America I don't want yes to you there. are ma'am I cannot N- yes you are Therese, yes you are if you want to fly me out for some jollo fine but I don't want to no, America ma'am. is like is the place I would not be and that's I a agree lie. please that's the lie. Be, no I'm serious a, I that, swear I lie. promise you that's a, I promise I don't you I promise. I swear to God. Ma'am, you're not going to sit up and say all your family members your uncles and all them people out here and your ass ain't out here I don't believe it ma'am no. I don't be- He's the, not all. Oh, my auntie's in Maryland. I don't give a fuck about them. He is the one I need back home because, like, he's very resourceful. He tried Ma'am. processing, right, to calm down after COVID, right? They have held his papers. Like, I feel like this is a conversation we need to have. To be honest, a lot of immigrants, to be honest, actually want to come home. But the process, no, the they money don't. the government wants to take from them, please. Can we actually have this conversation? Okay, no, you don't. Y'all ain't trying to go back. Girl, when y'all come over here and people start talking about sending y'all back, they, they say that as a form of punishment. They say sending you back home, that's what you do to scare y'all. When the kids come over here and the kids ain't acting right, I'm going to send you back to Ghana. No, Papa. No, Papa. Don't do it. I'll be good. I'll be a good nigga. Y- y'all use home to scare people. Don't play games like they want to go back. Y'all, your home is the boogeyman to niggas now. Y'all threaten people to send them back home. And it scares them to act right. Don't sit here and Guys, like it's mango people. season in Ghana. Very affordable Stop mangoes. It. Um, Ghana, I swear to God, we live in a tropical region. And you like to paint this area, this idea that we're in shambles. And I like that because it makes you feel good. But trust me. No, it doesn't make me feel good. No, 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 no. Let's keep it a buck, though, sweetie. People are living foul over there. You act like we have not gone there. Not, not all of it. And I'm saying some of the people are very wonderful. But it's not the business. Let's keep it a bug. Let's not act like people ain't shitting in the streets over there. I've seen some of that stuff, ma'am. It's down bad. Let's not act like people ain't over there eating bush meat and doing some real weird stuff. Let's not act like there's floating cities of garbage in areas where... Bush people... meat spiced with ginger and garlic in some very herbal soup will actually heal your life. Try it. Try ma'am, it. I'm telling ma'am, you. When it's smoked... Um, when when it's smoked with some garlic, ginger, and some herbs, you would actually be grounded. You would actually be listening to the words of your ancestors because herbs are moving through no your... No, thank you. I don't want no buffalo zebra wings. No, thank you. I'm good. Trust I'm good. me, Tariq. I swear to God, I feel like you will have a good time. And I know you've been to Africa before. I have so I been. Love and, how and, you... and, and I I don't want no jerk ostrich. I don't want ostrich meat. I don't want jerk ostrich. I'm good, ma'am. I don't want no goddamn bush meat. I'm good. No, it's, a, it's an exotic bird. We don't eat ostrich. I don't know about you and Americans, but we don't eat yeah. any. Come on. Yeah. Come on, yeah. boo-boo. You're going to no. get some organic chicken, light soup. <laughs> Hello, Tariq. Ma'am, Come it on, ain't just chicken. You are it gonna get chicken. some organic chicken light soup spice. No, ma'am. Dog, I, I didn't see people up there barbecuing hyena puppies and all that shit, and I don't want it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I don't get, give a shit how much ginger you mix it with. I'm good on the bush meat. I'm good, ma'am. But anyway, dear. Anyway, let me get some more people on here. Thank you so much, beloved. I appreciate you for calling, dear. All right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, but. 
Tariq, I, I just want to say, please, like, l- let's talk more things about how Black people will get reparations, liberation, you, you know, like, all this hate talk. Africans and shit, I agree. But, like, and nobody I mean, don't waste, time. don't waste time on Africans. Don't make us the topic, to be honest. I can't, whenever I come in, I'm like, why are we so important to these people? I'm like, God damn it. Let us but just be in our deplorable states. You brought yourself up, ma'am. We weren't really talking about you. To be honest, we were kind of talking about um, Dinesh D'Souza and those guys. We weren't even really talking about you, man. You kind of interjected yourself in the conversation. So, yeah, you kind of projecting because you were an out of sight, out of mind. We weren't really talking about African people, but you hopped in talking about what we need to do and how we need to get it together in Flint and Mississippi. And you sitting over there eating elephant calves and bush meat and talking about if you put some ginger on it, it tastes good. So yes, ma'am, we're going to have to kind of put the spotlight on you, ma'am. You know? But anywho, all right, dear, but you're going to be okay. God bless you, beloved. All right. 